Good evening. BCD displays have been around since the 50s. Tonight, we'll try to revive a vintage display from the 80s. So, please sit back and enjoy a new episode on the Technomora channel. Every now and then, I scour the internet for new parts or old vintage equipment that would make for an interesting project for one of my videos and not too long ago I found a German website in fact where they advertise all sorts of vintage parts and uh, and equipment by the way um, I'll put the link to their website down below below the video um, should you be interested to go and check their website actually it has a, a funny name something like ask Jan or something like that in any case I started to look through all the parts they sold and uh, one of the parts that I found was this now I know it's a bit hard to tell from where you're sitting what this might be but this is actually a display element you know uh, a BCD display actually pretty much something like uh, hang on I'll show you something like this okay so this is the the, the kind of, of um, LED display you'd be familiar with okay so although this one has four elements built into one block um, it's still the classical LED uh, eight segment display element basically so actually this element here so that I bought recently on that German website um, is one element like this but this isn't any old LED uh, display element um, it's actually built with tiny little filament lamps yes you heard me right filament lamps no LED inside this is really old school as a display and um, those guys where I bought these elements were so nice that not only did they sell me six of these parts for a reasonable price but they also also sold me an extra one so a seventh display element which unfortunately is not working correctly but they sent it to me say as spare parts for repairing some of these other ones so I thought, well, instead of disassembling the seventh one, which they sent me, why not have a look at um, what's wrong with it, and then uh, let's see if we can repair it. For those of you who are not entirely familiar with uh, BCD display elements, I'll show you quickly. Uh, how these uh, actually function so inside of each segment you see here on a display and by segment I mean one of those white little elements you see there's a small LED now we all know an LED basically functions like a diode right so it has an anode and a cathode so in order to make these light up you connect each little LED 
with its cathode to ground which in this case would be uh, the blue wire you see here and all of its anodes with a red wire which is this one here and since these LEDs uh, all work uh, these are all red LEDs red LEDs need a very low voltage to function in general so a red LED will light up quite brightly uh, already at about say one and a half to two volts DC uh, I'm pumping in two and a half volts DC so that it should be really nice and bright and that you would see um, what it does when it lights up now remember this element has four display elements inside of it which means that in this case this is a common cathode display which means that all the cathodes of all the LEDs of each segment so each display segment are tied together okay so if you would have to connect each LED separately with one ground wire and one positive wire since there are eight LEDs in one display element you would need 16 wires but they cut down on that by connecting all the cathodes of each LED inside one element together so you only need one wire for the ground which leaves us of course eight wires for the other elements in the display well I say eight and not seven because I know you can only count seven segments here but there's also the decimal point okay which is a tiny little white dot you see down there now since this is a four in one display um, they sort of disconnected this little dot here and placed two dots in the middle so between those two elements and the left two okay since this is a display normally being used in a clock okay and in a clock you don't need the decimal point at the end of each number you need a divider okay so these double points here now I wired it all up in my breadboard so that you could have a, a look at how it looks when I make each LED light up now remember if you look at the little schematic I, I drew here okay so that each LED in each BCD segment okay so one display segment okay has seven display segments okay you see them on the left there and they are labeled A to G okay and they always go clockwise so A B C D E F and G is the middle one the little dot on the right uh, below the uh, display is called DP and that's the acronym for decimal point all right now all of these LEDs are connected to six pins and you see the pins on the schematic as numbered from 1 to 12 and the numbering goes counterclockwise okay so the lowest row is 1 to 6 the upper row is from 7 to 12 each of those pins is connected to a specific segment and you see the numbering uh, down below okay so pin 1 is connected to segment E pin 2 to D etc and it goes all around now each separate display element and there are four in here discounting the uh, decimal points in the middle of course um, it needs a cathode a common 
cathode because remember all the cathodes of all the LEDs are tied together and those are designated by the COM uh, acronym so you see COM1 which would be the first element COM2 which is on pin 9 would be the common cathode for the second element COM3 and COM4 respectively for the third and fourth element alright now I connected all those with blue wires you see the blue wires here okay so suppose we would want element A of the display to light up okay so you see there element A is the uppermost LED in one display element okay well I ordered all the segments of the display from left to right A B C D E F G and the last one is the decimal point so let's go through them one by one so this should be A There you go. So this is A. Okay. So let's go to the next one. B. C. D. E. F. G. And now comes the decimal point. There you go. Alright, so suppose we would want to form the number 5. What would we need? Well, we would need the segments A, F, G, D and C. Okay, so let's connect those together. So let's take segment C. Let's take segment D. Okay. Then what do we need? Uh, segment A. Segment A. Okay. What else do we need? Uh, we have C, D, A, F, and G. Okay, so the last two. F. Oh dear, we're missing a wire here. Okay. Well, let's let's do it without without the G. So without the center segment, and let's see what that gives us. Okay, here we go. There you go. Okay, so remember uh, the the center segment was not connected, so G is not connected. Okay, right. So that is how you form numbers on a display. Okay, so that is how a digital BCD display works and the way often these displays are used is that let's say a microprocessor switches on each display element on one by one one after the other very quickly left to right on on off on off on off on off very very quickly and it turns on the anodes of the LEDs it wants to display okay so it would turn on all the LEDs for the number 5 in the first one then switch it off switch the next one on then turn on all the LEDs forming say the number 2 then switch it off turn the next one on etc etc and that's how a processor would 
light up each number in sequence but it does it so quickly that you think you're seeing the whole number in one go okay so that's how a BCD display works so in a normal digital display I mean in the ones we're used to see um, in most of the devices you know like for example this one here okay let me show you so you see it down there in the right corner yeah this kind of display um, is depicted by the schematic on the left okay so you have in one display element eight segments which are all designated as a b c d e f g and then you have the decimal point in the right lower corner not always but often okay and they are always labeled in this direction okay clockwise now behind each segment you see light up in a display there is actually a tiny LED and the LEDs are more or less connected together like you see it here in the schematic so you have an LED here and one here and here and here so you have behind each segment an LED and in some displays all the cathodes of all the LEDs are tied together that way you only need one wire to connect up all the LEDs to ground therefore it's called common cathode now you do have displays where the reverse is done in other words all the anodes are tied together in that sense you would only need one wire to connect up all the LEDs but then via their anode and those would be called common anode but in the display we're going to use today we're going to use the common cathode variety okay now you can buy displays which contain eight elements uh, pretty much like this and each element of course has a number of segments so which form up the number and therefore number of LEDs so seven to be exact so to form this display you would minimally need 28 LEDs that's of course discounting the points in the middle which are the separators yeah in a clock you often need only four numbers and a separator to separate the hours from the minutes now this is actually wired up exactly like this with only one difference that is that you'll find three extra pins namely a, a common cathode for each display element okay often the separator points have a common cathode which is either connected up to one of the elements one of the number elements or in certain cases it does have its separate little common common cathode pin and then you would need not three but four extra pins but this is largely how these things are connected now what happens is most often in in any sort of, of appliance which uses a, a LED display is that a small processor switches on each element each BCD element in turn on okay so 
say it turns them on from left to right so first this one and this one and then this that and that and each time it turns on one specific element it sends out the right positive voltages to turn on the wished LED to form a number okay so when it's done displaying a number here it switches off this display element and moves on to the next one and it does it all over again now to display a nice steady large number on these four display elements the processor runs through each one very very quickly in fact if I'm not mistaken it's often at a frequency of 400 Hertz okay so 400 times per second one specific element is switched on and displays a specific number since it happens so quickly the eye never sees the other ones uh, shutting down therefore creating the illusion that you see the full number at all times but of course that's not the case so if you look at this display here okay so right now you see the number say 581 when you see the number 581 the tiny little processor behind the display switches on first the number 5 shows it to you then switches it off switches on the central number shows you an 8 switches it off and then moves to the last one and shows you another number well for the moment this is not very stable but let's say the number 3 and then it switches that one off and starts all over again from the left and that's how a display works okay that's how a digital BCD display works now the vintage display we're going to see today is functions let's say more or less according to the same principle so there are a number of segments which light up and thus form a number and each segment has its own pin so like I wrote down here okay so remember each segment is labeled A to G clockwise okay always so the segments of this display are connected to these pins and you you see that it has in effect nine pins this one so for each segment one for the decimal point one and then a ground a common ground now the funny thing with the display we're going to repair and use today is that it's not LED but it's light bulbs okay so the vintage display element we're going to use is this one here and I've got a few more in the box over there okay unfortunately for me uh, most of them if not all of them have defective display segments meaning that the light bulb behind them okay um, has a, a burnt true filament which means that technically speaking I need to open all of these up and build in a new light bulb you might say okay but what's the big deal is just a light bulb well yeah I'll show you in a moment what I mean by light bulb okay let me show you first how a display like that looks more or less since it, it only works half if I switch it off 
Okay, so keep an eye on the front of the display element. There you go. Now this is how that vintage light bulb digital display would work. Now you can see the uh, E segment, so the one on the lower left is uh, gone. Okay, because I connected up all of the segments to the plus and the segment E doesn't light up so we know for certain that the light bulb behind that segment is broken all the others seem to work though now like I said there's a tiny tiny light bulb behind it and those light bulbs run on any sort of voltage between say 2 and 6 volts of course if you run them at 6 volts they'll be very bright but they won't last very long so that's why I'm running them at 5 volts but they're plenty bright if you look at them from the front now if you look at them from the side though it's already not so very bright okay so I suspect that one of the reasons why they stopped using these kind of display elements is because the reliability of a light bulb is not as great as an LED in other words a light bulb would blow rather quickly in comparison to an LED now just for comparison I connected up a tiny little light bulb and I don't know if you can see it by my fingertip over there and I'm going to show you just exactly how much light such a tiny light bulb really produces all right I connected up the tiny light bulb to my power supply via the, the wires you see here so now let me show you just how bright that little lamp that little light bulb is when I put power on it and I'm putting just the same amount of power I used for the display element okay so 5 volts have a look well that's a bit underwhelming wouldn't you say so it's really not very bright uh, let me give you a close-up and just to show you I am using the same voltage okay so let me just give you a close-up of the light bulb there you go so that's the light bulb and let me tell you um, it looks infinitely brighter in the camera than in real life in real life I can see it glow the filament but it's so puny that I'm actually surprised that it, it, it even manages to light up a segment on, on this display okay so yeah well that's the technology they use inside the display element you see on the right and that's what we'll have to repair so let me show you what exactly we're talking about here so I disassembled one of the display elements uh, because um, well at least in this one two of the tiny light bulbs you see over here are broken and need replacing okay so now just to show you how how tiny this all is have a look at my finger okay so you see the size of my fingernail well compare that to the tiny light bulbs you see on the 
almost microscopically small PCB in front of it. Now I can tell you that is tiny, okay? And I'll need to replace two of those tiny light bulbs and replace them by a new one of this kind. Okay, which isn't exactly the same kind, but it size-wise and voltage-wise, it's pretty darn similar to one of those. The only difference is, unfortunately for me, that these light bulbs are domed and smooth at the top. Whereas the replacement light bulbs I have are not domed but pointy at the top okay that's how they were made actually and height wise the new ones are perhaps two or three tenths of a mil higher than the old ones but I had a look at it and I think they might just just about fit but of course the only way to know that for certain is by replacing them and that's exactly what I'll do next and oh by the way I also show all the parts of which this display element so one like this okay is built up out of okay so you see it has a, a connector with tiny little diodes on top and the diodes had have very little studs extremely small studs which if I enlarge okay you see the little studs on top of the diodes well those studs actually fit right inside the tiny little contacts you see over there on the bottom PCB of the light bulbs you know and it is my opinion that these diodes were mounted by a machine and not by a human because it needs to be made so precisely that I can't imagine this having been built by hand the rest however probably was assembled by hand and these are the little diode guide holes okay so you see the little tiny holes through which the diodes fit okay and make contact to the tiny little contacts on that board over there I'm trying to show you what I'm working on uh, because it's extremely extremely small and in fact what I need to desolder is you see I have a dental tool okay which has an extremely fine point at the end okay it's extremely sharp and I'm pointing with my dental tool at the exact right lead of the little light bulb that I need to desolder okay so exact where the point of my dental tool is that's what I need to desolder and then I need to desolder after that the other pin which is this one right here okay so the two leads are practically parallel and and I need to desolder that with, with a, a solder tip which is although reasonably fine when you see it on camera zoomed in like that um, you can tell it's rather big in comparison to the leads so anyway let's try to desolder this leg or this lead first and this is not going to be fun it's not 
simple. I tell you, ooh, ooh. this is not simple at all. Yeah, I think I did it, but I'm not sure. I need to check because it's so mighty small. I think I did it. I did it. Okay. So, okay. I think you can still see what I'm doing. Yeah. So, I unsoldered the first lead and I'm trying to bend it straight a little bit so that it's not in the way of what I need to do. Okay. So that's one lead and that lead was soldered to that contact right there okay so it was soldered to this contact here so now I need to unsolder oh god and now I need to unsolder the other lead and okay hang on mm -hmm. okay here we go I hope you can all see what I'm doing because obviously with this display I can only do it once. Uh, I already replaced the other light bulb but I'm going to show you in a minute. But yeah. Come on. Yep, got it. I got it, but um, I hope I didn't damage anything. So let me see. What is this here? No, I think I'm. I think I'm fine. Yeah, I think I'm fine. Uh, let me see. Can you still see what I'm doing? No, wait. Okay. So I. I think I managed to unsolder both leads without damaging anything, but it's mighty, mighty small. Okay, one more minute, and I'll give you a close up of the light bulb. Okay, so I just need to flick off a little bit of solder from the lead that. there you go okay okie oh, dokie well let me take it out of the clamp and then let me show you the result okay so this is top side of where the light bulbs are that I need to replace and I think you can tell that this little bulb right here okay this one here I already replaced and if I show you from the side I'm sure you see that there is that it is indeed a different light bulb slightly different uh, the diameter is more or less the same as the original ones only the top is a little bit different but I had already a look I don't think that will form a problem now I just desoldered this little light bulb right here. So we're going to try to extract it without causing damage to the print. Let's see. I'm using a special kind of dental tweezers. Quite solid actually. Okay. There you go. 
I extracted it. A little bit like a rotten tooth, you could say. Okay, so now we need to replace this little light bulb that I just unsoldered with a new one. Okay, so now I've got to thread the replacement light bulbs leads which are extremely fine okay if you compare it to the width of my fingertip well then you can imagine how fine those leads are I think perhaps two tenths of a millimeter okay so now I've got to thread those leads into tiny little holes down there so I hope you can see what I'm doing but so I need to find those little holes and then thread the wires exactly in those little tiny holes which is not easy I'm telling you so. there you go okay they're, they're right in the little holes so now what I do I gently press down the light bulb into the opening like that okay so the new light bulb is now into place now what I need to do is to <coughs> bend over the leads cut them to the exact necessary length and solder them okay now we're going to solder the leads back on I mean the leads of the replacement bulb here we go first the left lead okay that's not too bad so darn small that it's really really hard to get a good grip on it almost literally a good grip because it's incredibly tiny and fine and okay I think that's good uh, let's see I hope you can see what I'm doing I hope the image is sharp yeah I think it is okay so here we go now the right lead um, <laughs> it's springy okay wait I think I can solve that by gently, gently, gently pushing on it while I'm soldering it. And there you go. <laughs> Is it good? Well, not really. Well, let me give it another try. I think I think that's okay I finished replacing the little light bulbs on top of the print the PCB I, I would say okay I'm going to show you with my pointer but it's so tiny I really have to be careful here not to damage anything okay so a little bit of explanation 
the connector board of the display element is right here and I'll just lift it a little bit so that you can see what I'm talking about okay so you see the pins below which ultimately will connect to a power source okay and those pins connect through a tiny PCB to a bunch of diodes you see over there standing upright now if you look carefully and I don't know if I can zoom in to show you but hang on I'm trying to there you go so if you look carefully at the diodes and more specifically at the top of the diodes so I'm at maximum magnification now so if you look at, at the top of the diodes you'll see that each has a small protrusion on top okay exactly where my pointer is and that protru protrusion has uh, has had a little a tiny little pinch by I don't know some machine in the past and that pinched end is made that way exactly because ultimately that pinched extension will fit on the other side of this little PCB here so on the underside if I flip it over gently okay you'll see that there are no contacts or anything they're just tiny little holes okay that's all there is and the ends of the diodes will slide into those tiny little holes okay and once oops hang on once they are through those holes they make contact with small rings okay you see on top here now I don't know if I can make it if I can make a close-up view of it okay so you see those tiny little holes there um, are surrounded by little ring-like structures okay so those pinched ends of the diodes come in through the holes on the other side of this little PCB and get stuck on these tiny little rings you see over here okay and there are uh, if I'm not mistaken there are nine of them on this little PCB okay and that's how the power is really transferred from the pins the PCB pins you see here to the tiny little light bulbs right here via a bunch of diodes okay now basically a light bulb is non-polarized so you could ask yourself why would they connect uh, light bulbs which have no polarity at all to diodes why would they do that well um, the answer is actually surprisingly simple since this is going to be connected to some digital circuit and uh, that digital circuit has either positive outputs or inputs uh, or uh, inputs that can be put to ground 
you need to add a sort of a non-existent polarity to these little light bulbs and you do that by the use of diodes you see over there so what they really did was transform a simple light bulb into a polarized I mean electrically polarized light source okay pretty much like an LED you could say and that's why those diodes are there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these this little PCB you see here and I'm going to mount it back into its little housing here and you see this housing has holes which have the exact same diameter as those little diodes okay the diodes slide into those holes so that's what I'm going to do and then I'm going to mount this little PCB on top of that okay I slid the diodes into the foot of the display element so the next thing I need to do is connect this tiny little print here on top of that right I slid the tiny little PCB on top of those pin pins diode pins which were sticking out of the foot and I put a protective little rubber layer on top of it okay so then I gently fold the whole thing back like this and when I say gently I, I really mean very gently and the next thing I'll do is I'll slide this piece of rubber over these little light bulbs okay and you see the rubber has two little uh, well, uh, extrusions metal extrusions and those fit exactly down those holes there okay so if I slide it over the light bulbs like this each of these little light bulbs should find a place within the cavities of this rubber piece all right now the next and last step is to mount this little piece which is actually the front of the display like this on top of the display body to give this display element okay so and the way I'll attach it is with two screws which I can show you so two screws like these two very long screws that will go practically <laughs> excuse me practically through the whole body of the display okay and there you go it's fully mounted now okay. so you don't need to tighten these screws extremely much just enough to attach both halves of the display body to each other and that's it so the only thing I need to do now is clean it and of course test it see to see whether it will function or not so I must admit I feel rather curious to see whether it will work or not
something's telling me that there's something I still need to do to the display because you can see it's only the A and B segment that light up and nothing else so what I'll probably need to do is to disassemble it and then have a look whether all the contacts uh, are okay so here we go again disassembling it for the second time okay so all the light bulbs except one work and actually the one that doesn't work is the one over here uh, let me see if I can show you this one here if I gently push it you see it works so there must be a tiny bad contact somewhere on the print below which unfortunately for me will force me to well to repair it one way or another um, and and I you know I'd really rather not do this because it, this is very very fragile yeah and if you bend and unbend it several times you know you really risk breaking it so well I'll have to be extra careful and uh, unmount the little top PCB somehow and then see where the bad contact is with this little light bulb here okay so because if I give it a gentle push it lights up so the leads on the other side or one of the leads at least uh, must be making bad contact very very unfortunate well okay there's nothing to it so let's just do it I think I managed to repair it oh yes now all the light bulbs light up perfect now <laughs> this is good this is really good but now I have to mount it together again well and I'm kind of curious to see whether um, the contacts will survive reassembling the display element so um, let's see okay I mounted the rubber holder back onto the tiny little light bulbs <coughs> and uh, I preheated it a little bit with a heat gun okay so not a lot but just enough to make the rubber quite malleable and quite flexible okay so that when I squeeze it over the little light bulbs the amount of friction and pressure it puts on the little light bulbs is reduced uh, because well as you all know by now it's really very uh, fragile but uh, let's see if I did a good job of it and let's see whether it, it works now mm. oh yeah so it does there you go okay so I must admit though that um, the light bulbs you see in the image show up a lot brighter than they are in reality okay so um, <clears throat> they are still relatively bright but not nearly as bright as in the picture itself okay but they all seem to work and 
and you can count for yourself there are eight little light bulbs all lit up which is perfect okay so now the next and final step which is to mount back the uh, display element okay which is this all right so let's just put it on top to give you an idea of how it would look like fully lit there you go so that's how it looks fully lit but let me remount it first okay and by the way when I film the little light bulbs uh, with all the lights on in my lab um, the the brightness you see now it's is much closer to reality okay and you'll notice that four of the light bulbs are rather dim while four of them are a bit brighter okay and that's because the replacement light bulbs which are the dimmer ones um, require a slightly higher working voltage than the other four okay so um, actually the, the, the replacement light bulbs need 6.2 volts whereas the uh, older uh, light bulbs require far less voltage in fact closer to 5 volts to uh, be comparatively as bright as the replacement ones uh, but I need to run it at a voltage somewhere in between which is uh, for the moment about 5.8 volts okay which makes the replacement ones slightly dimmer uh, in comparison to the older original ones but you'll notice once I mount the display face onto the light bulbs um, there's actually very little difference in brightness there you go now the front of the display is mounted back and all the segments work okay so it's really nice now uh, to see it all function and um, well I, I can do a test and switch uh, a few segments on and off just to see what the result is okay, okay so remember the the segments are paired so I can't really switch off one specific uh, dis display element but I can switch off uh, a, a pair of segments there you know like this this is the number five and that's how it would look not bad eh it actually really looks sci-fi I like it um, and then you know you have to remember this display was uh, probably uh, this type of display was built around the 80s or maybe even the late 70s in um, well eastern Germany well back then we still had East and West Germany um, and I'm sure some of you will remember that Eastern Germany was the communist side of Germany which of course disappeared together with the Iron Curtain uh, okay that as a side note so the display works now let's see what we can do with it when all the segments are lit on this uh, display um, and we're running it at 5.4 volts as you can tell from my power supply okay um, it consumes almost 
132 milliamps or no I would say not not even almost it does consume 132 milliamps even a little more and that's surprising um, I had no idea this display would draw that much current and it's a single display okay so imagine having four of these that would be 520 milliamps so half an amp to power four of these display elements that's crazy now you remember I built a VFD display element with its dedicated power supply and all that and I remember I measured the current that drew when uh, almost fully lit and that was I think at most 90 milliamps for a VFD a single VFD display element okay and and this one is just some tiny little light bulbs running at 5.4 volts yeah and it draws well almost 133 milliamps I want to take a minute here to give you a few tips so whenever I intend to build something and whenever feasible of course I really take my time to build something first on a breadboard uh, you know maybe a simpler version to have a sort of proof of concept and then I build something on a uh, test board like you see right there um, because you see it makes sense to try out uh, at least a few parts of your design uh, first uh, because there are always problems that arise when you start to get into the nitty-gritty of building something I mean truly practically building something okay so calculating and planning stuff theoretically is a very good thing but reality often uh, throws curveballs at you which you would never have expected while planning it uh, on paper yeah also um, I have the habit to build stuff as small as compact as possible for a number of reasons the the very first reason is that the shorter the path electrons have to travel between components the less likely it is that I'll um, induce unwanted uh, say noise into a design okay so the shorter the leads and certainly when you're building something which is high frequency um, the better it'll work secondly of course the more compact I make something the easier it is to use afterward or to build in to something uh, also it is a bit cheaper on print board yeah so uh, if I can build something on a print board this small and it works perfectly then why would I build it on a much much larger board um, it, that doesn't really seem to make sense to me unless of course you're visually impaired or you want to make a board which is more like let's say an educational tool in that sense it would make sense to build it larger still I think it's good practice to keep the leads of your parts as short as possible 
Now the last tip I want to give you is when you're building something on test board like this then you should really take your time to place your components okay so the components you see on this little board I switched places several times okay so I literally populated and unpopulated the board at least three times until I found a design let's say that works for me and that is logical and also as compact as possible and that's the result you see over there so what I am going to do now is I'm going to solder the parts uh, one by one onto the print board and once that is done we'll have a go at testing it um, I'll, I will mention that I did build a single transistor uh, let's say proof of concept uh, on my breadboard over there and um, in fact what this is or what this could be called is a video driver board okay this is a driver board that will drive the segments of the special little display we have here okay so the display driver board is finished there it is don't worry I'll give you a sharp nice close-up of it once I show you um, what it does so actually there is a voltage regulator on the board which is an LM317 and I'm feeding it with the same voltage I would feed with my lithium ion battery so 7.4 volts which I inject into the little circuit via this blue and red wire here okay so that comes from the power supply the output of the LM317 is set to five and a half volts okay give or take uh, say 10 20 millivolts that's what it is so it feeds the display with five and a half volts now technically I could go to 6.2 volts with the little light bulbs I installed so the replacement bulbs um, unfortunately the light bulbs that the original light bulbs that are still inside the display um, can take only say about five volts yeah which is TTL level voltage uh, so I let's say I I will push them to five and a half volts but I wouldn't advise pushing them any harder anyway uh, you can tell the display is off and that's because there's no positive signal going to the base of the driver transistors so what I'll do is um, I connected up a crocodile lead to the plus uh, that comes from the LM317 and I'll power all the bases of every drive transistor at once so um, let's have a look okay I connected all the drive uh, the drive transistor base leads to a crocodile lead which is powered uh, by the output voltage of the LM317 okay so I sort of tied them all together and clamped them into the crocodile lead which would 
mean that once I switch on the power supply the whole display should light up at once okay so let me shut off the ambient light and let me show you so there's the power supply so here we go there you go isn't that nice so yeah the display works just fine so the driver board allows me now to switch on and off um, any segment of the display so I mean one of those little bars that form the whole display or the decimal point you know that little point or dot on the right lower corner um, I can switch them on and off uh, by putting voltage on either wire here so let me show you okay so let's say let's try a few of these okay so okay so here we go there you go so yeah you see as I strike any particular wire the corresponding segment lights up okay so and what's nice about this is that it only takes a very very little voltage to switch them on or off which means that basically I can use any kind of circuit to uh, drive the display okay so this is the other wire bunch see so the decimal point and a few segments okay let me see if I can switch them all on come on <clears throat> wait, wait wait there you go no yes no yes there you go so um, yeah that's what I get when I uh, put power onto the lower bunch of wires so yes it's quite nice now there is one thing that um, you need to remember uh, whenever you're going to repair one of these displays um, and and it is something which I noticed only later on which is that the case of the display is very very brittle um, in fact uh, there are a few cracks which well I can't show you while it's in the display socket but yeah well I'll show you once I pull it out of the display socket so let me give you a closer look of the video drive board so here is a view of the board itself I pulled out the display which is over there to show you how the video driver board is built and um, well there aren't that many components on it really there are eight transistors which are BC 547s so NPN transistors eight resistors a um, integrated circuit socket which I cut in two okay so I'll explain in a minute uh, how precisely I did it there's a an electrolytic capacitor of 47 microfarad um, a multi-turn potentiometer the LM317 and down below the LM317 there's one little resistor yeah um, 
don't worry you'll get the schematic as well so yes basically there aren't that many parts on the video driver board which makes it a nice and clean design also it's rather small so if you compare it to my thumb well it's it's rather small okay so I made it nice and compact and um, it works like a charm anyway uh, another thing which is important about the board is once you assemble it okay so once you've assembled all the parts and the wiring and etc then before you plug in one of those displays you really need to um, calibrate it and and by calibrating I mean by setting the output voltage of the LM317 with this potentiometer here okay so what you do basically is you you hook up your multimeter the negative to ground obviously and the plus of your multimeter you hook up to the output pin which is the center pin of the LM317 and you measure the voltage from there if the voltage is too high or too low you can set it by turning this little screw on the multi-turn potentiometer you can vary it between 1.25 and whatever sort of input voltage you put into the LM317 remember the LM is um, limited to an input voltage of say roughly speaking 35 volts DC okay so don't go over that and in any case um, it's rather senseless to put in that much voltage since that sort of display over there will never use more than 6 volts DC okay and anyway I planned to power it with my lithium ion battery which only gives about 7.4 volts well actually 7.50 volts uh, 7.5 volts I mean when it's fully charged so yes um, now regarding the display let me see if I can show you okay so right there at the base of the display you see a small crack right where my thumb is okay so it appears that the the stuff of which this display is built at least the lower part of it um, is more I would say Bakelite than plastic unfortunately the the walls of the socket uh, are very very thin very flimsy and therefore very brittle well Bakelite is brittle anyway so when you screw it back together you have those little screws at the bottom you should not put more tension on the screw than is necessary to keep the, the three parts of the display uh, element together okay so as soon as they they seamlessly fit together you should quit putting more uh, tension on the screws okay because if you do you will crack the housing as I noticed myself um, there is a way to repair that and that's with super glue uh, I didn't do that just yet but I'll put a dab of, of super glue onto the crack and I think that that will do to repair it in any case um, these are quite brittle okay
so yes it's that simple it's just a regular integrated circuit socket which I cut into and then I placed the both halves back to back and there you have it a perfect socket for this type of display these are those typical little boxes they send you when you order a variety of parts okay so like this little box originally had 10 compartments okay so I don't quite remember what I ordered uh, in this particular box but I think it was 10 different kinds of ceramic capacitors anyway these little boxes really make like fun boxes to put in a small project and I'm seriously considering of putting my uh, decay counter uh, with its little oscillator and a push button uh, step by step uh, mechanism let's say into a little box like this um, it's, it's not too thick let's say it's about one inch or maybe an inch and a quarter high um, so and and there's plenty of space in it and and you can see the circuit board right through it so it really makes for a perfect little uh, project box now the only thing is this um, you can pull out certain dividers which are little plastic tabs like this okay so you can pull those out but then it seems um, the central part you see here um, and and these little tabs here uh, are sort of welded to the bottom of the box now I took a look at my PCB which I'm going to use and well you can see by the width of it that I really only need to take out the center part of um, of the box so let's just do that um, I'm going to use my flush cutter to cut out uh, the center part so let me get started with it and I'll show you how it goes okay so I started the cut with my flush cutter so you can see there I, I really cut at the extreme edges with my flush cutter I did the same here okay so what I need to do now is to really cut it to the bottom and I'm going to use a exacto knife to cut right to the bottom of of the box uh, at all four points so here there and those two points here at the front and then um, I'll try to cut it flushly with the bottom of the box okay once um, you cut out let's say part of the dividers okay it's only uh, a trick of, of using pliers like these these are just plain duckbill pliers and you grab one of the dividers like this okay and you just twist it a bit like that you move it on half an inch twist move on twist move on twist and as you do you slowly tear the plastic away from the bottom there you go 
okay it's all a matter of twisting and patiently there you go tearing at it and it's gone let's turn this into this so I transferred the parts from the breadboard to a PCB and then I built everything into a plastic case granted um, you could say aesthetically it's not extremely pleasing but um, I wanted to make an inexpensive BCD display tester so I really didn't want to go the whole mile uh, on expenses for finishing the case or anything like that I just wanted something that worked and that allowed me to test BCD displays so there you go I built this now don't worry I'll put up the schematic at the end of the video uh, you might wonder how it is powered but um, as usual I power it via a small transformer okay which is external in fact it's over there okay so that's the transformer I'm using to power it and the reason is is that I keep the transformer external because I want to use it to power a lot of other projects I build so eventually I'll come to it to build a specific little case for the transformer as well with an on off switch and a fuse but I, I just haven't come around to it just yet but the the thing is I, I, I don't want to buy and build in a, a transformer for every new project I build that would be a bit costly and in the end you know uh, uh, buying cases where transformer fits wherein a transformer fits and all that um, is extra cost and since I build many projects um, I simply don't want the extra cost of buying a new transformer every time so yes I kept the transformer external I just connected it up temporarily like this anyway um, this video wasn't really about the BCD tester itself but about the BCD display the vintage one that we restored and there you have it it works really nicely um, I'm quite pleased how it turned out granted you see uh, which three segments still have the original light bulbs and not the new ones but uh, I thought that it would be better to leave in the original uh, light bulbs in the display instead of replacing them all um, if not for authenticity at least for um, simplicity and uh, for not running the risk of damaging it unnecessarily so yeah there you go I hope you liked the project and the video so please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you want if you really like what you see then by all means subscribe Thank you and I'll see you soon for another project.